So this again in the, in the common condition, I'm sure you all would have come across Calaisian and I get lots of referrals actually. And then uh, uh, the county uh, is frustrated as well and uh, as much as you all frustrated. <laughs> Uh, so I, I tried to work out a program actually to overcome this one, uh, just to inform you all today. I spoke to the, some of my colleagues and uh, my, our clinic director as well. They, they have some, uh, they showed some interest to, you know, uh, how to solve with the training of GPs uh, to deal with that. Um, so uh, Calaisian, you know, it's a benign self-emitting, slowly enlarging non-tender, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a commonest uh, uh, inflammatory condition of the eyelid. Um, uh, normally, you know, 30 to 50 years, but that doesn't mean children can't get or elderly people can't get, they can get, but <clears throat> it's commonly uh, in 30 to 50 years of age. Um, and uh, males and females are equally affected, sorry. So just to refresh your, you know, anatomy. So there are two glands I am talking about this, uh, um, the, mybomian gland, which is embedded in the tarsal plate, then uh, you get, uh, sorry, this, uh, the gland of Zeiss. The, uh, the gland of mole, I mean, I have seen referrals, you know, with the cyst of, sorry, cyst of mole, where the clear cystic fluid, you know, the clear fluid uh, cystic lesion that's come from uh, the, sorry, the gland of mole. So the, the, the uh, mybomian glands are about, say about 25 to 40 in each lid. Uh, the upper lid is a bit more than the lower lid. Uh, so uh, what I'm trying to say by having surgical intervention or at an early stage surgical intervention is not the answer for Calaisian because there's an underlying pathology we, we have to attend. So how do they present? You know, it can be, you know, unilateral or bilateral or one eye having both lids involved or even in one lead, many lesions can be found sometime. So that's how they can present it. So if you look at these uh, three, uh, they, they are typical you know, presentation. If you evert the lid, there's no inflammation of the tarsal conjunctiva and uh, you get a lumpy uh, you know, uh, appearance. So that shows uh, it, it's a Calaisian straightforward. So what's the next stage? So if it gets infected, or uh, inflamed more, then it can uh, lead to further complications. Uh, so that's what, you know, it needs to be addressed. But, um, you know, uh, initial stage, when they present to you, let's say initial stage, uh, if, if you attend, then most of the time you can treat because it's a conservative management, it's the mainstay of treatment. So uh, what, what does it do when it is infected uh, or when um, the uh, material uh, in the cyst, uh, which is in the mybovian gland or gland of Zeiss, which leak out, causes inflammation. And if there's an infection that causes preceptal cellulitis, which you can see starting in these two and will end up at the end where you can't open the eyelid. But if you op force open little, you can see the eye looks normal. You know, the conjunctiva of the bulbar conjunctiva will be white. Uh, eye, eye movements will be normal. That's a preceptal cellulitis. So if you flip the lid or evert the lid, then you can see a localized uh, hyperemia or uh, injection. Uh, so that's actually uh, uh, from calaisian to hodiolum, you know, where the necrotic part or the necrosis has, uh, uh, necrotic process has started already. Um, so uh, well, if you look at the pathophysiology, so the breakdown products from the, you know, when, when uh, the pore is blocked. Usually these glands open in, in a row, in, in, in one line where the mucus, okay, the mucus uh, um, membrane meets the uh, cornea and uh, that causes, uh, th there's a row of glands when the pore is blocked for inflammation or infection or uh, then, or, or the secretions are more viscid and, and they, they become sometimes cheesy or very waxy. Uh, then you can uh, cause an obstruction that lead, uh, the products leads into the surrounding tissue cause a granulomatous reaction. So it can uh, either break into the conjunctival sac or outside, either way. So no, commonly it is, uh, so at early stages you can see you know, on the conjunctival sac. So if you look at the histopathology of this condition, it's a, it's a, a granulomatous reaction, as you all know, with involving giant cells and mononuclear cells. 
if the bacterial infection sets in, then you get a necrotic reaction. So I'll show you the slides. You know, this slide is a you know low uh, low magnified and high magnification. You can see the two turn giant cells with the formicytoplasm uh, with multinucleated giant cells. When it goes to necrosis, then you get the polymorphs. Uh, you know, getting in there uh, uh, like this one. Um, Sometimes you might see a, a slight swelling of the lower lid, but non-tender, but has been going on for ages. If you invert the lid, you will see a granuloma there. Uh, you know, it's like pyogenic granuloma you see on a day-to-day -day basis with any wounds. You know, it's a similar thing. Uh, you will see it in the lid uh, like a mushroom sort of uh, shape. Uh, so uh, histologically, you see all these, uh, um, you know, cells uh, causing the uh, granulation tissue, um, that, that, that has to be treated surgically, otherwise it won't go away. So, so what we have to, so it's a common condition, everyone uh, can diagnose, it's a clinical diagnosis, so uh, you can um, uh, be worrying about when it ha happens at the same point over and over again, or in an elderly patient, if that is happening, a recurrent one, then probably something uh, you know fishy. So like uh, think about sebaceous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, or squamous cell carcinoma. The other conditions which I have just listed here, just for the sake of completeness, but I'm sure all these conditions uh, you all can recognize uh, or differentiate, other than maybe molluscum, you know, but it, it happens in everywhere, you know, all the parts of the skin with a small dimple in it. Uh, but other conditions uh, you can differentiate. So it's pretty easy to diagnose, uh, pretty easy to uh, treat at uh, you know primary level, and, and that's the mainstay of treatment. So what we do, conservative management, conservative management, conservative management, right? So <laughs> what I'm telling is because, you know, uh, I know your frustration because, you know, uh, when patients come to you and uh, you have to refer, but certainly uh, uh, if you try that religiously, you know, then you can achieve a good outcome. Um, so warm compress is the mainstay of treatment if there is associated blepharitis. The, the one thing you can do actually, if you have a slit clamp or if you have a magnifier, you know, go and press the lid margin to see the secretions, how do they look like. You know, they are very clear, normal uh, uh, oily secretions, but if they are uh, viscid or if they are thick or sometimes greasy, then you know there's blepharitis. Or you can get uh, uh, crusting and scaling and uh, of the lit margin. So then it, it, there is associated blepharitis, then you have to do the lit massage and, and, and warm compress. Even if you don't see much, probably it's worth doing the warm compress regularly because uh, you have to express those secretions from the glands that they are the one you know, uh, causing the problem. So if you can do it on a regular basis, and please remember this is a control we are trying to achieve. It's not a cure like by doing the, so uh, people come with uh, myobomin gland dysfunction. You can't, you can't treat that. I mean, you can cure it. So you treat, uh, it's a control. So please remember that. Um, so. Antibiotics not necessary. You can, if you think there's an element of uh, infection, so please start on some antibiotic topical initially. But I will come back to systemic antibiotics, uh, uh, you know, indications. Um, it can be treated uh, with intralesion. So that's what I was thinking about, you know, to train uh, whoever interested in, in uh, you know, whether they would like to do the, some incision and curatage or, um, even giving intralesional steroid, which, which actually probably, I mean, uh, those who are willing and interested, of course, that will be uh, something which will help. Um, then these are the instruments, you know, if you had come across before, the calcium clamps, curate, not, not many, I mean, uh, we can ask counties to buy for you all, because we had a program a few years back. <laughs> Oh, no, honestly, we had a program about uh, maybe 10 years back uh, to train and, and to give, uh, but. Uh, it, it didn't happen after that, I do not know why. So this is how we do, we give the local anesthetic, ever, put the clamp on, evert the lid, you know, make a vertical incision, don't go uh, crisscross or across, because you know, you, you are going to cut too many glands. So just go vertically and then put the curate and, and clean the cyst, uh, that's it. Put the ointment, put an eye patch, just keep it for a day. So it's pretty easy, I mean, uh, I mean if you, if you. <laughs> 
I mean, it, it, it's not, I mean, I'm sure you all will be doing much more complicated procedures, I guess, I mean, compared to, but it, it's a matter of getting learned if you all are interested. So then uh, the, I told about uh, systemic antibiotics. Of course, when there is uh, blepharitis or uh, myobomin gland dysfunction not responding well, then you uh, give uh, doxycycline, um, you know, for three months, you know, 50 to 100 milligram a day, uh, or acetromycin, uh, so the three cycles each, uh, each cycle um, uh, you give it for three days, 500 milligram a day. Either you know either of them, uh, and uh, recently there is an intense uh, pulse light therapy for those who have features of rosacea. You know they, you get all you know pink and red, uh, you know cheeks and uh, forehead, and so for those people, uh, I mean we don't do it in public, but certainly some private providers and um, say optometrists they are quite keen and they are. Treating well, certainly it, it, it is a it is a uh, one of one of the other option. Then lid hygiene and lid scrub is the main stay of treatment. So if you don't treat, what happens? Preceptal celluloitis. We saw it disfigure the uh, 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 lid and also press the cornea. If it is involving the upper lid, uh, and if it is more than five millimeter, it can lead to um, um, astigmatism. You know, especially in children of embryogenic age, say before ten years, then probably you know. You refer always, we accept that and, and then try to treat those people as early as possible. Um, but otherwise, uh, uh, you know, mainstay of treatment, please remember it's a conservative treatment, but certainly there's an option for intralesional steroid or for insulin and curatide. So that's all about uh, calasian.